Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and um, a bit of return after a few months away. So what have I been working on? Well, it, <laughs> if you follow me on social media or you watch the Plastic Crack podcast, you will know that I've become somewhat enamoured with a certain, <laughs> a certain game system, a certain rule set, a certain background. And that is Turnip 28. Um, now, <laughs> I first first came across Turnip 28 through Instagram earlier this year, and I noticed some really, really sort of out there modeling, some, some fantastic creativity of these really interesting mashups, these kit bashes. Um, and it was combinations of sort of Napoleon uniforms with uh, medieval armor, black powder weaponry, and I, I was intrigued, but I didn't, I liked looking at it, but I didn't really get involved. Um, but over the last sort of six or seven weeks or so, I've really thrown myself into it. Um, for those who aren't familiar with Turnip 28, it's a, it's, a, it's a background ethos sort of rule set that's being created by a dude called Max Fitzgerald. He's immensely talented. And he's, he's created this whole thing by himself. Um, there's a link in the below to his, his Patreon. Um, which will outline exactly what he's doing with this system and I, I just think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, the rule book at the moment is sort of a living document, so it's updated uh, quite regularly. Um, and the, the current one I think is version 17 of the rules and the rules are brilliant, it's a fantastic game but for me the background it just, just makes up everything for me. Um, in a nutshell, I know um, my buddy Don from Boots on the Table uh, <laughs> I, I explained to this. I explained this to him on a sort of weekly or daily basis exactly what Term Twenty Eight is. So, in a nutshell, here's the background. Um, so, it's set approximately a thousand years after the Battle of um, Austerlitz, so the Napoleonic Wars. Um, there's been constant war. Um, technology has stagnated. Um, through this constant war, the countryside has been churned into into, into mud, quagmires, swamps, marshes. Um, and the, the world is covered in, or the countryside in the world is covered in this strange root that's harvested by humans, which causes strange visions and mutations. So essentially what we have are these um, sort of battered and tattered archaic armies um, fighting each other with rusty black powder weapons, um, with these strange mutations. And they're, they're led by sort of uh, lead, charismatic leaders, um, zealots. The, the whole background is it's just so so colorful one that well colorful and brown is the way i describe it but for a better description uh yeah head along to max's um patreon check it out and just have a look and yeah you'll really enjoy I've, it certainly captured my imagination but what i thought i'd do today is show you exactly what i've been up to because i've, I've actually created my first army now the, the one of the best things about turnip is it's completely miniature agnostic there's no figure range out there so you've got free range to kit bash exactly what you want your army to look like. And anyone that knows me uh, knows that I'm rather fond of a bit of the old kit bashing. So the past sort of four or five weeks that I've been working on this army have just been so enjoyable. I've used bits and pieces from all over the place. It's quite a small scale game as well. So what you'll, you'll see is uh, in front of you is an entire army. Uh, and in this fact is a bit bigger than what you'd actually use. What I'm gonna do is run through what I've made um, the bits and pieces I've used to make them, but also to outline the, the composition of a, of a turnip army. Um, hopefully it'll get people involved. Um, I know it's really popular, and um, after this I'm going to build up a second army so I can start, you know, getting my mate over, um, convincing him he's playing ball action, but in fact he'll actually be playing turnip 28, because uh, <laughs> it's just the evil way I am. Um, but no, I've already got a second army planned after this. Um, so what I'm going to do is to say run through the composition and the units of a, of a turn of 28 army and just show you what I've done because I, I've i enjoyed working on this so much. So what I'm gonna do is just chivy with the camera so we're gonna have a bit of a zoom in here. <clears throat> so from the beginning, armies are, are led by what are called snobs. And there's two different types of snobs. There's toffs and toadies. So uh, a, an army can be led by, by one toff and it can have a, you know plenty of toadies. And these have different, they confer different rules and they also, they, for every toff and toady you have, you get different amounts of units. So for example, a toff will have uh, two units and a toady will have one. Essentially, these are officers that, that, um, that provide orders to these, um, to these units. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is start off with my, my officers, my toadies. So this is my toff um, here. Let's get that focused in. Um, so he is made up of bits and pieces. Um, Lance Neck Body, um, American War of Independence, Arms and Warlord Games. The head I think is a Perry French line infantry. And he's on a rather large base. Uh, as you can see with the painting on these guys, I've gone really mute, really dark, drab and a bit grim. Which um, sort of reflects the whole turn up at 28th ethos. But this this, this was the very, very first um, turn up 28 figure that I ever kit bashed many months ago. So naturally he was going to become my, my leader, my toff. And I, I just think it's... It, the makeup is so... You can just combine so many kits and everything is awesome. As you can see... A lot of them, well, most of them have roots growing out of them. That's, that's one of the mutations of Turn of 28, is a lot of the, the figures have roots and bits growing off them. Um, and that, that's a recurring theme in this army, which I've called the, the 13th Cohort. Uh, I don't know where that came from, but it sounded quite cool. So he is my Toph. Now I've got three toadies. So this guy here is the set, he's, he's, a, he's a toady. As you can see, Lance Neck Body. Uh, I'm not quite sure where the head came from. But again, uh, American War of Independence, um, arms with the musket, and again, some roots growing out the back there. Uh, the rucksack is from the French, uh, the Perry's French line infantry. So the, the, these actors, officers, again, really drab, sort of muted um, colour scheme. Here's the third one. So the lance net bodies work really well for these guys because they're sort of their yeah, they're officer types. Yeah, and throwing a bit of Perry stuff in there. He's got a rather a rather sore looking hole in his head. He's still going though. Um, and I've decided to put them on these bases just to make them stand out as as toffs and toadies. And the fourth uh, toad is a little bit different. Um, this is this one here. Uh, now she, <laughs> she will be the she will be the toady from my what's called a stump gun, which is a, a cannon essentially. I'll show you that in a, a little bit. But I wanted something different for this one. So she is made up of a body from the um, Warlord Games American War of Independence Canon, a Games Workshop Demonette head, and a book from the Games Workshop Flagellants box. Like I said, I've just been scouring bits, boxes of plenty, and just seeing what works. Uh, and that is my fourth, or my third toady, and my fourth snob. And the good thing about these is that they're quite quick to put together, and you don't, well, I find I don't need to be neat when I'm painting them. Um, the, the, the gunginess really, really aids the, the, the look. So let's go back to, back to the unit composition. So for my toady, uh, some, sorry, for my toff, he has two units. So what I've given him uh, are these two. So these are called brutes. Let's get that to focus. Um, and these are a bit better than what we call fodder. Um, but again, these have been made up from a whole manner of kits. So the bodies are all uh, Warlord Games and Napoleonic French um, Light Infantry. The heads are from God Games Workshop, Perry, um, Great Escape, Dead Man's Hand. Uh, there's, there's loads of, of bits and pieces in there, and yeah, all the tufts and the growths on there as well. Now, because you got have multi-based mine, now you don't need to multi-base, and the rules actually say you know you can put on individual bases. I actually think they look better on um, on multi bases. I can really go to town on that mud. Um, so that's one unit of six, and then we have a, another unit of six here. So again, same bodies, Napoleonic um, French light infantry with a whole manner of different heads. So with these, we've got Perry's, we've got Games Workshop. Uh, I've even combined sort of on there, you know, Knight's Visors. I've sculpted a weird mask on that one there. It's just, for me, it's the, the creativity is just unabound on this. You can just really let your imagination go because there's nothing there's nothing right or wrong. There's no, no one's gonna tell you you can't have that. Well, why not? I, I can do it <laughs> as long as in my army. Um, that's the main thing. So what I'm doing is the, another thing with, with Turn of 28 armies is you choose, your, choose your, your cult. So I've chosen what's called the Slug's Lament, which grants me a free unit of these, of these grogs to arrive with my with my toff. None of this terminology will actually make a blind bet sense, <laughs> to be fair. Um, so that's why I would, I would recommend checking out Max's Patreon, having a, a skim through the rule book, and really immersing yourself in this fantastic game. So that's my uh, my toff unit. So my toadies, they have one unit each. So the, the, the next unit was 
This is slightly bigger than the, the, the Brutes or the Grogs. This is a 12 man unit, but again, I've broken these down into um, bases of six men. So as you see, more Napoleonics. Now these are actually based around uh, Warlord Games, Prussian Landwehr for the bodies. And again, whole manner of heads. We've got Victrix in there. That's a Victrix body on the end there, by the way. Uh, we've got Dead Man's Hand with the bag on the head. Uh, we've got Perry, um, 100 Years War uh, helmets. And that guy with the thing grown at the back of his head, that's a Skaven's tail, because I just thought it would look, it would look kind of cool. Um, and I just, I just love this. I just love this so much. Um, so that's one half of the unit, and then the second half of these chaps here. Again, Prussian Landwehr bodies, lots of roots and growths and things growing off them. And these, these are all these are all Perry heads on here from the, the Hundred Years War boxes and a couple of the, I think the mercenary boxes as well. So that is one unit in it by itself. It's a one twelve man unit of what we call fodder. These are your, these are your rank and file. These are your conscripts. These are the ones that are going to be uh, well, taking taking the brunt of the fighting. Um, so they are called fodder. So as I mentioned, uh, toadies get one um, one unit. So I have another unit for a uh, another toady. Now these are a bit different. These are called chaff. Now these aren't multi-base because these are skirmishers. These are sharpshooters. Well, if they can actually shoot, that is because they're not very good at what they actually do. Um, so here's one of them. Now he is based on quite a few things. That's a Victrix old guard body, which is... Um, my buddy Ken from the Plastic Crap Podcast, who does Miniature Wargaming Warriors, um, recently gave me a bunch of plastic old guard stuff from Victrix to, to, um, to experiment with these. I think the head might be Games Workshop, I'm not quite sure. But that's a, Vi that's a Victrix body, and that arm there is old guard as well. So, yeah. The story with this guy is that um, he was actually killed 100 years ago, but no one's told him yet. Okay, so the... There's only four in this unit, it's quite a small unit. So again, these bodies are based around um, the Napoleonic French um, line infantry by, by, by Perry's. And so I've snipped their heads off and replaced them with um, Perry helmets. And the arms are from the Warlord Games American War of Independence, um, Continental Infantry, if I remember correctly. Um, and the same with, uh, with these two as well. So these are going to be, these act as sort of in, in loose formation, um, small unit, they're, they're skirmish, and they're called chaff. There we go. And I just like, again, really drab, muted colours. Um, really gives it that kind of grungy, uh, turnipy feel. Um, now you can normally play, uh, the, the real state of a standard game is one toff, two toadies, and four units. But I've, got a, I've, I've made a bit more. So for my last toady, I, uh, <laughs> I made this. So this is this is called a stump gun. Um, I, I always wanted to include some artillery because I thought you know, the, the the basing and the the modelling um, prospects would be quite good. So I picked this up. Um, we recently had um, our, pl our crap plastic crack podcast um, convention at uh, uh, Boards and Swords Hobbies in, in Derby, and I picked this up, which is a, it's um, uh, it's American War of Independence uh, cannon. Uh, and what I've done is I've kept the crew as is. But I've replaced their heads with um, Perry um, Hundred Years War helmets, and I've gunged it up. I've broken it a bit, and then I've doused them all in mud. And there's even a Games Workshop giant rat on there as well. Look at that! Look at that chap there. Um, but I, I love this. It's just there's just something uniquely odd about it. So there we go. That's another one. So I've got, actually got a couple of spare units. Um, I've just these, these are the last one I finished to finish the. Um, the project is these are I'm not going to say they're their they're full title because I don't have I don't have swearing on my channel um let's just call these they are classed as what's called illegitimate children um you'll, you'll find them in the rules anyway so these are these have been mashed up from Death Corps of Krieg by Games Workshop that I, I chopped their legs off many many years ago and these have been put on um 100 years war night um cavalry by Perry Miniatures and then I've used some green stuff to add a bit of some boils and some welts on there as well. Again, a, a smattering of roots and tufts and all manner of oddness on there. And then I made this last week. I don't know whether I can use it, but I just wanted to. I just wanted to see if I could turn it, turn it up as we've we've started calling it. This is a <laughs> this is a Victrix War Elephant. Um, 
and in the back there's a, a, a guy with a musket with a sniper scope on there in medieval armour and then again with the elephant I, I replaced the tail with a skaven tail make a bit of mutation and there's some there's some <laughs> sculpted boils on there as well just to make it stand out I've got I've really got no idea uh, where this came from or or anything I just thought it, it would be rather cool to include in the army so um Max if you're watching this can you can you develop rules for a, a war elephant please that would be really awesome because I really want to use this guy but again, it's just from a modeling perspective, there's no limits. Just you're only limited by your imagination. And I have quite a, a feverish imagination at times. So I've really, really enjoyed working on this. Um, and that's what I've been up to. That's that turnip 28 for you. Um, again, it's something radically different from what I'd normally work on, uh, but something that's really taken a hold of me. I'm so interested. Um, in, in this, um, in this, 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 this rule set, this background, the, the whole atmosphere of the, of the world is fantastic. So my next thing will be to build a second army so I can start gaming with them. Um, now this, this all in, this only took me three weeks to put together. Um, not, not a lot of time thrown into it. The kit bashing is, is the majority of it though. I spent, I spent hours kit bashing. Um, just going through many, many bits boxes um, to come up with this. But as you can see, it's not very big. And this is this is larger than what you'll need for a game of turn twenty eight. Um, right. Well, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Like I say a little bit strange, not something you'd normally see on the channel. Um, but I've I've been totally totally taken by this project. I really have. So expect more turnip twenty eight on the channel in the near future. Um, if you've got any comments or questions, which I imagine <laughs> I imagine quite a few people may have some questions and um, just leave them down below in the comments section and I'll certainly respond to all comments and questions but as always thanks for watching do take care may your dice roll well and I'll catch you all in the next video so bye bye for now